algorithmic processes, because they are made up of well-defined steps, can be easily automated. Our car doors to open when receiving a remote signal, our lights to turn on when we enter a room, sprinklers to water the garden at set times, our music to mute when we have a phone call, the air conditioner to set to a particular temperature, our cars to warn us when we haven't put our seatbelts on. And we also have more complex algorithmic automations found in industry. Robot assembly lines, milking machines, mining machines, shearing machines, medical monitors, aircraft autopilots. And while many automated systems still include human elements, this is changing. And the trend is that if it can be automated by a computer system, it will be. Let's take fast food as one example. The process involved in ordering a hamburger at your drive through through to it being delivered to your car. Now this is being made more efficient by gradually taking humans out of various steps in the process. Calculating change was one of the first things automated. Taking orders can now be done through touch screens. Cooking the burger uses an automated conveyor belt. Preparing drinks were recently automated and while a few steps remain it will not be long before the entire fast food process is fully automated. Indeed, it already is being done through more familiar automated shopping technologies. Vending machines. These now exist for all forms of drinks, but also ice creams, french fries, hot dogs, hamburgers and pizzas. So the technology exists. It is just waiting for entrepreneurial students to work out how to use this technology in ways that solve problems, meeting needs and wants, and potentially becoming technology tycoons. The point is, every industry and workplace, including teaching, faces automation. And it is our job to prepare students for this environment, to understand it, and to be able to create solutions within such environments rather than being subject to circumstances beyond their control, simply because they don't understand them. And because technology has become so cheap and ubiquitous, it is possible to automate just about any process, providing a rich arena for students to have real-world impact from their solutions. But they do need to develop the systems, futures and computational thinking capacity to be able to recognise opportunities for automation and the strategic and design thinking capabilities to turn such opportunities into solutions. In schools we find many examples and opportunities for automation. Library book lending, online assignment submissions, attendance checking and parental notifications, presentation recordings, access systems for doors and gates, digital locker allocation systems and many others. Now with the emphasis on agriculture in the new design and technology subject, for example, it is possible to automate many of the processes involved in small-scale small scale aquaculture, where fish waste provides nutrients for a small garden. And the garden then filters the water for the fish, and we create an ecosystem that we can monitor and maintain with temperature control, automatic fish feeding, and lighting controls for the, for the plants. Now students can access this data about these processes, planning and experimenting with different combinations to determine the optimal growing environment for both systems, and receiving email alerts if the temperature falls too low, or toxic levels of nutrients or pH is building. Similar automation can occur for outdoor gardens, with a system of planting seeds, providing exact amount of water for, and nutrients for each plant, and even removing the weeds. While we still want students to experience non-automated aspects of such activities, this still occurs in setting them up. And being able to sustain their interest and commitment, particularly over weekends and holidays, can be made easier with automated systems, reducing the risk of neglected animals and plants, not just from students but also teachers, and providing a model of real-world industrial practice. Now another area of automation attracting a lot of attention at the moment is home automation. Taking any and every device in the home, linking them together and automating these devices. We looked at this briefly at the service If Then Then That, but most major companies are now developing their own systems 
to provide e and it provides an easy way of teaching students about automation when we don't have access to industrial environments where automation is occurring. Classroom use of the Internet of Things can mean can deepen student experiences with such technologies in their homes and provide them an opportunity to engage with the concepts involved in automation. Home automation environments such as Amazon's Echo, Beacon's Wemo, Google's Nest and dozens of others provide easy ways to control PowerPoints, light bulbs, thermostats and webcams. Now the Netamol that I use with students uses a webcam that has facial recognition software designed to identify family members and provide email alerts or sound an alarm if a non-family member is observed. But it is easy to connect this up to if then then that and then it can be used to detect students, identify those who are in attendance or not, who leaves a room and who arrives late. There are hundreds of devices that can be easily connected in this way and it is very easy to connect Arduino and Raspberry Pi devices as well. As long as they have an internet shield or Wi-Fi and then you can use a wide range of sensors available to these devices to trigger events, use services such as this, if then then that to have actions occur as a result of such triggers which might be turning on, on or off the lights, automatically feeding the fish, taking a photo of the garden, providing lighting up a warning sign when the UV is too high and many other possibilities. Now of course a number of you will be in schools where you don't have access to the internet to do these things. But you may be able to create a network of things. Devoid of the internet, but Wi-Fi enabled. Within a classroom, you should still be able to have devices that communicate with each other, triggering events, and responding to triggers. Now, while this does miss out on some of the scaling and abstractions of solutions provided by the internet of things, it can still provide an opportunity for students to engage and develop solutions that they can envisage would work outside of a closed system.